Hi guys, I hope everyone is doing well. And this session, we're going to be covering something a bit different. It is analyzing Donald Trump's tweets about the coronavirus. So it's something fun and interesting, and hopefully it would help you learn a little bit more about Tableau. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the session. Okay, so this is the dashboard we are going to be creating, where it is analyzing Donald Trump's tweets. So this includes all his tweets from the 1st of January 2020. This is just tweets mentioning the COVID-19 crisis. These are popular phrases that he mentions a lot. And his top five tweets. We're also going to add actions. So if you click on a point in the dashboard and click on click for tweet details, it actually gives you the underlying data it was referencing, which is quite cool. So if you would like to take part in this tutorial building this dashboard, then continue to watch. Hi everybody, welcome to this tutorial. We are going to cover quite an interesting little dashboard today. We're going to build a Tableau dashboard and it is going to be about Trump's tweets, mainly around the COVID-19 crisis. So just before I begin, you can get the data set on my blog, which is databud.com. It is linked below this video. And if you scroll down to the article, I've linked the data set here, which you can download. It is on an Excel file. And also the Donald Trump picture I've used, I've also linked that so you can download it as well. And just a note, I extracted this data from a site called trumptwitterarchive.com. So if you want to get fresh data, you're welcome to extract the data again. Otherwise, you can just use my link over here. Okay, cool. So let's open up Tableau. Okay, so usually when you open up Tableau, you're greeted with this window. And it's pretty simple. On the left is the data sources that you can connect to. And on the right is usually some training material provided by Tableau. And generally there are sample workbooks that Tableau have created for you to have a look at. But right now what we're going to do is we're going to connect to our Twitter data. So just remember where you save those downloads and what we're going to do is that since it's an Excel file, we are going to select to a file in Microsoft Excel. So click on it. And just navigate to wherever you saved it. So I saved it on my Twitter Tableau file under Trump tweets. It's a reasonably small file, just 380 kilobytes. I've just extracted three months worth of data. So since January the 1st, you're welcome to extract more. Okay, click open. Okay, great. So now we're on the data source pane. And this is where you can do some tricks with your data before actually bringing it in to Tableau, the data visualization pane where we actually build our charts. So I'm just gonna do a brief tour of this. So on your left, you have your connections pane and the data source. So you can see the Excel file was called Trump tweets and it's a Microsoft Excel file. You can edit this if you want to, just click on the small arrow and you can rename it. And if you're connecting to an Excel file, usually whatever sheets are in that file appear here. So because there was only one sheet, one sheet is just appearing. And you can see immediately Tableau brought it in to this white space. And I'm going to rename it. So to rename it, just hover over it. And once your cursor changes to this, double click and name it. So I'm just going to name it Trump tweets. Ooh. Also think it's good practice to always uh, rename your sheets, especially when you bring it into Tableau. Once you start building more complicated dashboards, you're going to need a lot of data sources and naming them sheet one, sheet two don't really work out. 
Okay, and you can see over here, again, it says sheet one, Trump tweets. Now this actually refers to the whole data source. So again, I'm just gonna rename this. So double click, select all and just backspace. And I'm going to rename it Trump tweets underscore data source. Right, so let's look at the real meat of the data source pane, which is the actual data. And the Twitter data here is quite simple. So they have a source. So Trump tends to tweet a lot on his iPhone. There's the text. So this is the actual text of the tweet. The created at. So this is a date of when the tweet was created. The retweet count. How many retweets it got favorite count so how many likes it got the is retweet field which is a true or false if you can see so this is whether trump had made a retweet this is your twitter id so ids generally on your database are good for counts if you want to count unique values and you can see there's some weird columns here so i brought this in on purpose they're just empty columns for us to get used to not only deleting them, but using a data interpreter on Tableau. And before I cover that, I just want to go over the types quickly. Okay, so let's just have a look at the types in your data source. So for instance, this column, you can see it is a text field and hence it has the ABC icon on it. So if you select it, so just click on it it will tell you the type that's selected and you can also change it. So you can change it to a date, a number, or even a geographic role. But this is correct, so we're just going to leave it. Now, if you have a look at created at, which is a date format, it's actually reading this as a string, so we should change it. So click on the icon and change it to a date and time because it does have a date and it does have a time. And now let's just deal with these last four columns. So sometimes when you work on Excel, you often get tables which aren't structured properly. So for instance, sometimes there's a random blank column or sometimes there's a random blank row at the top. So what Tableau has done is created this data interpreter function. And if you click on it, it cleans the Excel table and structures it properly. So let's click on it. And as you can see, those columns have disappeared. And that's mainly because Tableau realized that they have no data in it. So it's probably a mistake. Okay, so we're good to go. And just two more things I wanted to chat about. So on the top right, there is a filter function and adding filters basically means seeing only a certain part of the database. So maybe you'd wanna only analyze Trump's tweets that are not retweets, then you can use the section here. So it's pretty easy. You click on add and this pane pops up and you click on add. And if you only want to see Trump's tweets that he's written himself, so click on is retweet. Okay. And you're going to say false. Click on OK. Click on OK again. And now all these tweets that are showing are ones that Trump has written himself and has not retweeted. But I want to see everything, so I'm just going to get rid of this. So click on Edit. And just click on this Is Retweet filter. And remove it. And click OK. So you also can filter on maybe a specific year or a month. But remember, if you filter data on this level, you can't analyze it and create visualizations. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is the connection options. So you have an option to connect to a live data set or an extract. Now the extract function saves the data set 
in a high performing file called hyper and it just keeps a copy of this on your local computer so building your dashboards end up a lot more faster so we are going to click on extract and once you're ready click on sheet one at the bottom over here you can save the data source wherever you want to usually tableau defaults to the data source file uh, under your repository so i'm just going to click save okay and now this is your data visualization window now if you deal with big data sets sometimes the data takes quite a while to load so just be aware of that but because our tweet data set is quite small it was near instant Okay, so this is the data pane window. It's where we are going to build all our data visualizations. And to start off, I think I just want to create a simple bar chart that displays how many tweets Trump has been tweeting per day. I just want to see if there's any trends or any spikes. Okay, so to do that, let's bring in created at onto columns. So on Tableau, you just click on the field you want to bring in and we'll bring it into columns. And straight away, you can see that already the created at field has some null dates. So this means that the dates are blank and we'll sort it out soon. Now, the next step is to figure out how many tweets he sends. So to do that requires maybe a bit of logic. So on our data set, we know that every row represents one tweet. And Tableau usually generates a handy field called number of records. So this is a Tableau auto-generated field. And all it does is it counts the number of rows. So technically, this is actually the number of tweets. So we're going to rename it. And to rename a field, you can click on this little arrow and scroll to where it says rename so instead of number of records i'm going to replace this to number of tweets okay and now to bring it into this data pane it's pretty simple all you do is you double click this and it does a job so what tableau has done is basically took this number of tweets and place it on top of the text card under the mark pane. Okay, but remember I said I wanted a bar chart and also I don't want this by year, I actually want it by day. So let's change it into a bar chart because this table isn't looking too great. So to do this, you just click on show me, it's at the top right. And show me basically shows you what charts you can select. And the really cool thing about it is that when you hover over a specific chart, it actually tells you what you need. Okay, so for a bullet graph, you need zero or more dimensions and two or more measures. Now, a dimension and a measure, what are they? So a dimension generally is a character or a category. It's something that you can't measure. So think about dates, product categories, text of your tweets etc you can't measure that you can't do a mathematical operation on it measures on the other hand you can so you can sum measures together you can add them together and that's generally the big difference okay so back to this we are going to click on the bar chart uh, tableau calls it the horizontal bars so click on it once to get rid of show me just click on it once again and it disappears Right, so now I don't want year, I actually want day, month, year. So to do that, you can see what Tableau is giving me. So on this blue pull, it says it's giving me only the year of the created at. And that's usually what Tableau defaults. So to change this, click on the arrow. And if you scroll down, you can see the one that's selected. But I want day, month, year. So scroll down to where you find it applicable, which is this one. And it's saying 
month, day, year. That's as good as we're going to get. So let's click it. Okay, much better. So we have the date on the Y axis and the number of tweets on the X, but I want it swapped around. So to do this, there is an icon that basically tells you it's swapping the rows and columns. So click on it. Great. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want this colored by if it's a retweet or not. Okay, so for instance, this bar, I want it split into what are retweets and what aren't because I just want to see an overall pattern of how much he's tweeting per day and does he retweet often. So to do that on Tableau, it's pretty easy. Look for the is retweet field, click it and drag it on the color. There we go. So what this color legend is saying is that retweets are in red and original tweets that he's typed out himself per se are in orange and any null is in blue. Okay, so before this we figured out that there are some dates that are null, so let's get rid of them. To do that we are going to drag the created at field into filters. So click on it, drag it and drop it. And click on years, click on next. And you can see null shows up here and we want to exclude that. So if you click on it, it will tell you selected one of three values, but we want it excluded. So click on exclude and select OK. OK, cool. Now that that's sorted, we can look over here and the is retweet where it showed blue as null is now disappeared. Great. So let's do some formatting of this. So firstly, I want these grid lines to disappear. And to do that, just right click anywhere on this chart and select format. And this format pane is basically whatever you need to do to make the chart look better. So you can change things like the font, the alignment, so whether you want it centralized or not, your sheet color, A border around the dashboard and finally this icon is for grid lines so the grid lines look like they're horizontal which are rows so click on rows and you can see there's a faint grid line so just click on it once and click on none and they disappear okay and now I actually want to change the font I just want it to all be tableau bold because that looks a bit better so click on the A icon and where rows is selected, click on sheets and where it says worksheet, click on the font. So this basically is saying that it's going to apply this font to the whole worksheet. Okay, so let's click on the blue arrow and move one up to Tableau Bold. Okay, it looks better. And lastly, I just want the background to not be white. I like it to have a bit of a gray color. So click on this full bucket where it says sheet. Click on worksheet. And let's do this gray here. So it's the third one. Okay, so the next step would be changing the color of the bars. So select color in your marks pane. Go to edit colors. So to change the false color, we're going to select it once. And I'm going to change it to the blue here. Now, this is from the automatic color palette. Tableau has different color palettes that you can have a look at. So if you select on here and you can see there's all types of different colors. But I am just going to deal with this for now just because I like the colors. So for true, I think I'm going to go with a uh, gray and this gray here is fine. Okay, and select OK. Okay, so the next step is let's actually change this axis name because it says day of created at, which is a bit confusing. We can just make it say date. So to do this, right click 
and say edit axis. And over here you can change it so if you want a fixed axis you can where it only takes a specific range. You can reverse the scale. Over here is where you change your axis titles so let's just change it to date. Okay so you can just close this. Now it's changed. So the last thing we want to do is change this title. Okay so to change the title just hover over here and double click it and let's just backspace everything here and let's change it to tableau bold and maybe 14 let's call it tweets since 1 jan 2020 let's centralize it okay and then the last thing I want to add is just a small legend on the title. So I'll press enter and change the font size to 10. And let's type in blue colon original comma gray colon retweet. And let's add some color so where it says blue colon original select it and change the color to blue so i'm going to use this blue here and where it says gray colon retweet select it and change the color to gray so i'm going to use this gray mm, let's do it a bit darker okay and apply okay so now that we have this here we can actually remove this legend so click on the small arrow and say hide card okay and the last step would be renaming the sheet so go down here and double click on it and call it tweet count okay now the next graph I'd like to create is something similar to this but where I want to count tweets where Trump mentions COVID-19 so to do that let's create a new sheet so click on this icon with the chart you can see a sheet 2 is created and what we're going to do is in order to count tweets which mention the coronavirus we are going to create a calculated field and a calculated field is basically an extra column that you create with a new data set that has some logic and rules that apply to it so let's do that where it says dimensions just go across and click on this arrow and the first option create calculated field click on it so it says calculation one, it's the name of the field. So let's backspace that and say mentions COVID-19. And how this calculation is going to work is that we're going to use a function called contains. So if you type in contains, it pops up here. And you can see it's telling you what we need to do. So we need to refer to a string and then a substring. So the contains function basically searches a specific string for a word that you want. So in our example, we are going to search the text string. So basically Trump's tweets. So in this example, we are going to search each row in the text field for coronavirus, COVID-19, etc., and flag that. Let's do one example. So contains, the string is going to be text. You can see it shows up. And you can say comma and the substring. Now, because we are searching for a word, we are going to put it in quotation marks. So open your quotation mark. And we're going to say COVID-19. 
so COVID, let's do COVID-19. Close your quotation mark and close your brackets. And let's just click OK. So let's just see if this works. Bring in text as rows and say add all members. And just expand this a bit. Okay, now I mentions COVID-19 field. Drag it and drop it next to text on the rows toolbar. Okay. And now I just want to exclude wherever it says false. So basically we're going to filter the data and it's very easy to do it this way. So click on false and say exclude. Okay, let's have a look and see. So now it's saying that these tweets here actually mention COVID-19. So it's mentioned here, it's mentioned there. So pretty legit. Now I'm going to add on this, I also wanted to flag the word coronavirus as well. So let's edit the field. So, so click on our mentions COVID-19 field, click select edit. And to do this, it's going to be a logical function. So type in or, and let's do another contains. So contains, open your brackets. The string is still going to be text, comma, the substring is going to be coronavirus. And close your brackets. And let's click OK. OK, so this increased the tweet count by a lot. Let's just see if this is true. Um, okay, coronavirus is mentioned here and it's flagged as true. So you do notice that if he capitalizes the capital C, it still flags it as true. It's because the contains function that we use is not case sensitive, which is pretty cool. It makes it a bit easier for us. And let's add one more, which he does mention and it's a bit controversial. So edit this field again. and type in all and let's add Chinese virus because he unfortunately says that as well so it contains the string would be text the substring would be Chinese virus and close brackets and click OK okay so this jumped to 204 records you can see this on the bottom left of your screen. Okay, so now we're gonna create a graph. So to do that, let's duplicate this graph here. So on tweet count, select it, right click and click duplicate. And let's drag is retweet out. And where it says mention COVID-19, drag this into the filters and click on true and click on okay okay great okay so the next step is maybe i want a label on each bar so to do that we can use the number of tweets as a label so on your left pane select number of tweets and drag it as label let's change this a bit it's rotated here let's just change it back to normal so click on label where it says alignment click on automatic where it says direction click on this and let's change the color so click on color and i'm going to change it to red okay and then the last thing we should do is maybe change this title so let's double click it we don't need a color legend because we just have one color. So let's get rid of this. Just backspace it. And let's call this tweets, tweets mentioning COVID-19. 
19. Okay. And let's change this title so where it says tweet count, double click it, backspace, and let's just call it tweets mention COVID-19. Okay, so now we have two charts. Let's create another one. Create another sheet. So go to this icon and click it. Now this bar chart, I just want to count the number of times Trump says a popular phrase. So something like every time he mentions Democrats and every time he mentions COVID-19 and every time he mentions the stock market, etc. So I have a few phrases built out that we are going to use. And we're going to do it very similar to the mentions COVID-19 field. So let's duplicate this. So click on this field, right click and duplicate. And you can see a copy gets created and now we're going to edit this. So click on it and edit. Let's rename this to mentions Democrats. Okay. And I think there's just generally two words he generally mentions when he talks about Democrats. So just two options, so we can get rid of this. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just change the phrases in these quotation marks, just to make it a bit easier and faster for us. So the first word he mentions when he talks about Democrats is obviously Democrats. So add that. I think the second one is he says Dems. So D-E-M-S. Okay, but now something is a bit different. What I'm going to do is actually initiate a count because I want it to be displayed differently. So what I want to do is I want all of these phrases to actually be displayed on the same graph. And to do that, we need one field which counts what phrases Trump makes popular. So we're actually going to change this a bit. So let's change this field and let's call it popular phrases and what it's going to be is an if function so I'm just going to enter this a few times so I can write here so how if functions work is that if a certain scenario happens then Tableau needs to output a certain answer and if a different scenario happens then Tableau needs to output a different scenario so essentially this is how the structure works so if scenario one then tableau needs to give me answer one else if scenario two then tableau needs to give me answer two Else if scenario three, then Tableau needs to give me answer three end. Okay, it can go on to answer a hundred if you want, but we are going to have a few phrases and this is a general structure. So my scenario one would be if my text contains Democrats or Dems, then I want popular phrases to output the word Democrats. So let's cut this. So Command X or Control X. And where it says Scenario 1, just paste it in Replace. Okay. And then Answer 1 would be Democrats. So open up your quotation mark. Type in Democrats. And close. Now to format it better, I'm going to press enter. It doesn't do anything other than just help you structure your query. So let's press another enter here. Where else if is? Okay, so we are going to actually have eight different popular phrases. So I am just going to write the structure of this for eight phrases. You can either jump a few seconds ahead or watch me do it.
Okay, so now that I've created the structure of the query, so what we are going to do is we're going to write the scenario here and then cut it and paste it. Okay, so the next popular phrase is the one that we've done before, which is mentioning COVID-19. So let's do that. So the scenario would be contains. So does the text field contain COVID-19? Or now I'm just going to copy and paste this phrase. And let's do COVID-19 like that. Or again, paste the phrase. I think let's do coronavirus. Or Chinese virus. I don't know why he calls it that. Okay, so this is actually all scenario two. So let's cut it. So control X or so command X and replace it with say scenario two. And our answer, if we scroll, would be coronavirus. Because if any of the text of his tweets mentions these characters or these words, then popular phrases must be coronavirus. Don't know why this keeps changing names. I'm just going to select apply. Okay, scenario three. So with scenario three, I want to see if he mentions the stock market. So just copy a part of this. So scenario three would be stock market um, space or paste it again. And I want to say the DAO, just D-O-W. Because when he does say DAO, he is referring to the stock market. So let's select this, cut it into scenario three. So let's paste it there. And then answer three would be the stock market. So quotation marks, stock market, close quotation marks. So the next scenario would be make America great again. So let's again paste the example. Oh, there's a mistake here. Let me just backspace that. And Okay, so his catchphrase, make America great again, or MAGA, so M-A-G-A. -A. You can see as you continue to build these if statements, it actually makes more sense. So let's cut it with the structure and paste it on scenario four. Then answer four would be Oh, let's just do the whole phrase. So quotation marks, make America great again. The next scenario, he talks about fake news a lot. So let's do that. So let's just copy an example. So let's change this to fake news. I think that's all for fake news. So let's cut this. And this is going to be scenario five. So paste it there. Answer five would be fake news. Okay, so the next scenario, he mentions Joe Biden a lot. Biden is a competitor of his in the next election. So I think it would be interesting to see how many times he mentions that. So let's create another scenario. So just copy the contains part, paste it there. So let's do, I think just the surname should be fine. So if he mentions Biden, let's paste it in scenario six. The answer would be Joe Biden. Okay. The next one would be... <laughs> So he tends to mention the word loser a lot. 
when he is referring to people that he does not like so it would be interesting to also see so let's do that as scenario seven so i've just pasted the recent one in instead of biden let us do loser and let's cut that and paste it in scenario seven and let's have the answer as loser and finally the last scenario is obama so let's copy this paste it here and let's just do obama let's cut this into scenario eight paste it and let's call it obama okay and that is it i'm just going to expand this so you guys can have a final look and pause the video just to make sure everything is okay your calculation should be valid now so everything's looking good and click ok ok that was a huge calculation but it is looking good so now let's create a bar chart with it so let's just duplicate this chart and why I duplicate it is because we formatted this already it just makes it a lot more simpler to do so right click duplicate and now let's just remove that there and the day created now yeah let's remove the day created at we're gonna keep number of tweets and let's bring in popular phrases okay that's great and let's exclude null because that basically is all his other tweets so click on this and say exclude okay now this looks better um, I also want it turned so click on this icon and I want it sorted so you can sort on these two icons the sorted from smallest to largest so ascending and this is descending and it's good practice to generally sort your horizontal bars or your bar charts with descending okay and let's change this it's looking a bit small so where it says standard go to entire view great these vertical bars are showing so let's get rid of that right click format and grid lines are here in the last icon click on columns and you can see the faint grid line showing up so click on it select none okay let's change the color um, let's change it to a bit of a gray so maybe this gray here okay and the last thing we're going to do is change this title so double click to change it and let's call it popular phrases used by Trump and select OK. OK, quite interesting. OK, so let's change the sheet name on the bottom. So double click on it and call it popular phrases. OK, so the last thing I want displayed is Trump's top five tweets by the number of favorite counts. So to do that, let's just duplicate this sheet. So right click, duplicate. And instead of some number of tweets, bring in favorite count. And just drop it right on top of where it says some number of tweets. Make sure that is selected. Let go. And now you can see it's changed to favorite count. Let's just remove this label as well. So instead of where it says popular phrases, let's replace it with text. So again, it must be selected. Drop it. And select add all members. Okay, so this looks insane. And it is because it's fitting all the data in this one small sheet. So instead of saying entire view, let's do fit with. Okay, a bit better. Remove this popular phrases filter as well. 
I need to expand this a bit. Okay. And let's sort out from largest to smallest. So this will sort out his tweets into the most liked tweets, as you can see. So now what I want is I want the top five of this. And instead of just selecting the top five, there is a way you can do it on Tableau and it's called creating a set. And a set is basically a set of logic or rules that govern your subset of the data. So to do that, we need to consider, okay, how are we calculating the top five tweets? Well, we are calculating it based on the text field and that's how we're going to create our set. So go to the text field on the left, right click, go to create and click set. So where it says set one, let's rename this. Let's call it top five tweets by favorite. Okay, and where it says general condition, click on top and click on by field. And it says top 10 by favorite count and the sum, which is quite close, but we want top five. So backspace, put in five and okay. And now you can see this field has been created under sets. And now all we do is we drag it into the filters field and there we go. So let's format this a bit. Um, we can fit entire view now that we filtered out our data. And this looks quite fine. We can get rid of this header. It's not really doing much. So right click and hide field labels for rows. And then I just want the favorite count as a label. So where it says favorite count, drag it as a label. Okay. Let's rename this. So double click, backspace everything and top five tweets by favorite count. Click OK. And let's rename this worksheet. So top five tweets. OK, so now we are done with all our charts. We have four charts. And now we're ready to create our dashboard. So to create our dashboard, we click on this window looking icon. And this is the dashboard pane. Now I want to change the sizing and you can do that by clicking on the size. And you can either, okay, you can have it automatic and this is where it resizes to the current screen. So I'm going to use a fixed size and the width is 1.3 and the height would be 8.50. Okay, and I want to change the color of this dashboard. So click where it says dashboard, go to format and change the default shading to a gray, the third one down. Okay, great. Now to fix your dashboard, you need to use containers and containers are here they basically work as boxes which fix your charts it makes it much easier to work with so click on floating and let's click on the vertical box or container i'm just going to resize it a bit okay and let's bring in the first graph which is tweet count so how you do that is you click it, you drag, and as soon as it's over this box, I want you to click shift and you can see it fixes to the container and let go. Okay. You're going to do the same thing with tweets mentioning COVID. So click it, drag, and as soon as it's over this box, I want you to click shift and you can see where it's highlighted to the left, bring it to the bottom. Great. Now I want another container. So bring in a vertical container, put it onto the right, just resize it a bit. And where it says popular phrases, click it, drag it over this container, hold shift, 
Great. And the last graph where it says top five tweets, click it, drag it over this container, and right here, let go. You can see there's a little formatting issue here, so you can just have a look at the sheet. So if you select this, click on this arrow here, and I just want you to bring it in a bit more. So just reduce the text size. Okay click back on dashboard one it should be fixed um, and then let's just fit entire view okay so sometimes you do have to play with the formatting don't think this axis is necessary we do have the labels here let's just right click it and deselect where it says show header and the same with this graph so select the graph hover over the axis right click it and deselect show header the last thing i'm going to add to this dashboard is just a picture and a heading so we're going to create a horizontal container drag it and hold shift when it's around here and once it's highlighted like this let go don't worry about the sizing for everything we are going to sort it out soon and let's add text first so drag in text, hold shift, and let it go here. Let's change the font to Tableau Bold. And let's make it 28. So let's call it, so let's call it analyzing Donald Trump tweets. Let's make the font a bit darker so maybe that gray here and we want a bit of color so let's make donald in blue and trump in red okay and i want to add a picture so let's bring an image drag it where it is on top of analyzing tweets press shift and you can see this part is selected so drop it and now let's choose an image so the image is the one that was included in the blog article or you can get your own image so it's this image here i'm going to open it i'm going to fit and center it and click ok and that's it Think let's just centralize this title so double click on it select all and make it center okay now the last thing we're going to do is put it all together so click on layout and where it says item hierarchy this is a great way to select the full container so if i select this vertical it selects everything in this container and this vertical here selects everything in this container so i'm just going to resize this to make it quite small i know it might just seem a bit weird but there is a method in my madness select the other vertical container and make this quite small okay now let's create one last container so go to dashboard and click on horizontal container and go back to layout and select this vertical actually select the other one this vertical and now you can see this little notch here i want you to click it and drag it so you can drag it around place it over this container and select shift and let go similar with this container so click it on your item hierarchy and here you can drag it once it's over this select shift and as soon as it's highlighted just like this you drop it okay and now you have all your charts in one container so if you go right to the top under horizontal it should select everything and the last action you do is select this arrow deselect floating now you get a nice fixed dashboard that you can play around with the sizing without affecting too much of it now there's one last thing we're going to do 
and we're going to create our dashboard action. Before we do that, we need to create a quick worksheet. So click on a new worksheet, which is this icon here. And this is going to just be a list. So let's bring in the tweet ID. Click add all members. And let's bring in created at. Just plop it next to ID string on the rows field. And let's click on the arrow. Let's bring in day. Now, usually whenever you do this, it changes it to a measure and a graph format, but I want it as a normal dimension. So click on this arrow and click on discrete. And that makes it more of a table format. Let's bring in text. So place it next to the created at. Again, add all members. And let's bring in favorite count and retweet count. Since it's a measure, you can just double click it. It will add it as a column and retweet count, double click it. Okay, change this. So go to, instead of standard, let's do fit width. And let's just edit this a bit. Right. And let's remove the created at for null. So click on this and exclude. Great. Okay. And now let's double click on the sheet title and let's call it tweet details. Let's change it to Tableau bold and centralize it. Okay. And let's rename the sheet to tweet details. And let's rename the dashboard to Trump. Twitter dashboard. Okay. And why I created this worksheet is I actually want to use this as a drill down for detail. So for instance, if the user selects on Democrats, they can get sent to the workbook and they can refer back to see the tweets that make up this 297. So to do that, all you do is go to dashboard select actions and we're going to create an action so click add action it's going to be a filter because what i want to do is click on democrats and they need to see those tweets so click filter it's going to be called click for tweet details and what this is is this just basically tells you where the user starts and where the user must end. So the user starts by clicking on any data point on the dashboard and they'll get sent to the tweet details worksheet. So not this, click on it, go to tweet details. Okay. So if the user selects any bar from popular phrases, he'll get sent to the tweet details. If the user selects any bar from the top five tweets, he'll get sent to tweet details. And clearing this filter will show everything as is. So click that, click OK, and OK. So let's try it out. If I click on Democrats, it will say click for tweet details. And this is exactly the tweets that that bar referred to. You can see over here 297 records and they all should either mention Dems or Democrats. So if I go back to my dashboard and deselect this filter, this would be the whole data set. Okay, let's try it out again. Okay, so on this day, the 10th of April, there were 17 tweets from Trump that weren't a retweet. What were these tweets? So I'm going to select it. I'm going to say click for tweet details. And these were the 17 tweets that he sent. So it's quite interesting. It also gives you a view of drilling down for detail. And it's always good to add actions to your dashboard. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please subscribe 
to my YouTube channel and like and comment the video. Your feedback means a lot to me and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.